We got some big live action tonight with the Bills facing the Rams. Going to be an unbelievable game. Finn fans, you know, we're hoping the Bills lose. This way we can go in Sunday and knock out the Patriots and get first in the division to start this critical 2022 season. We don't know how tonight's going to play out. And the bottom line is, if Miami handles its business week one, and then again in week three, we'll still get first in this division. Now, today, I'm going to cover a little story about Tua that came out, about him talking with Breeze. I think this is really interesting, and especially for the reason that he got to talk to Breeze. I'll get into that later. But... The Thursday injury report is out. I want to cover it. There's some good news and some little nervous parts to it as well. This is going to be critical. I know, I know, we're just a better team. But if this better team is really beat up and it comes in on Sunday with what could be rain, wind, or even a cloudy sky to reduce that sun, it does hurt hurt our chances. I'm not saying it cripples us, but we want to win. I want everything to go our way, everybody to be healthy, some to be out, and I don't care if it's one point or 50 points, because we beat the Patriots the 2022 season. The doors are wide open for all possibilities. Now, before I get into that, people have been saying for a while, why don't you do the live thing? I finally got the nerve up to do it. Tommy over at Mafia Sports Report has been training me a little bit. I'm going to give it a shot. We do uh, NFL overtime together. Last week was the first one. We're going to do it again this week here on this channel, Friday night at 9.30. Hopefully you stop by. Hopefully I do well. We'll see. It's going to be a whole new horizon for me. And I just want to say thank you for everybody stopping by, for the likes, the subscribes, the comments, the views, everything. I'm really grateful. This season has a lot of meaning to me because this offseason was crazy. I didn't know if I was going to get another season to actually watch on this planet Earth. So I am very psyched to see how it plays out. Don't know how it's going to play out, but I'm looking forward to it. So I want to thank you for bringing me back. Sponsors, I've appreciated all your support. I want to give them a shout out too. Because without Ace Per Head, this show is not happening either. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. All right, so my man Teron, he's already my MVP. And the fact is he turned Tua on to Breeze in the offseason. And he said Breeze would help him with whatever he could. And I thought it was really interesting because a couple things came out all tying this together. How Saban and his staff evaluated Compt Tua to Breeze. Now, obviously, Breeze did not have Tua's movement skills. There's a little bit of difference. Tua's a bigger guy, thicker guy, much heavier guy. But there's a lot of similarities, too. And I've been saying that for a while. I did a whole couple-hour podcast on Tua in 2020, 2021, how this kid really wasn't the Tua he was when he came into college. Injuries had limited him. You could see through study of him through college and in the pros how his mechanics were compromised by his injury and how he, as he improved his mechanics and his platform and throwing hygiene, this guy was going to go forward step by step. And we're seeing that this year. We're seeing his arm, his velocity, and everything kind of improve around that. And like many people I've said, great comp for Breeze, uh, for Tui is Breeze, a more mobile version, which is a really great asset to have. Now, I don't know if he's going to become Breeze, but I believe he could certainly get into that similar mold and have success. Will he stay healthy? How high will he take it? I don't know. But he spoke with Breeze in this offseason. And when you talk to a guy like that, that has similar skill set, and you get to pick his brain, it really kind of steadies things. Mentors in everything in life is critical. 
And I really believe that not only is he getting this talk from Breeze, but my man Duran is also in there helping this kid out. I don't know. I, you know, you could believe whatever you want, but he has been screwed up from the beginning. And it, no, it wasn't all Flores. Some people, it was Flores. No, it wasn't all Flores. It was Ross. It was Greer. It was a whole lot of stuff. But how you slice it, the kid's framework, as I've been saying for a year and a half, was a disaster. He's going to have his best season. What is that? I don't know. But if you take a look over here at this little graphic, you'll see Drew Brees in his first three seasons was atrocious. One touchdown, uh, zero, uh, zero in, in, uh, interceptions. 17 touchdowns, 16 uh, interceptions. 11 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. And then he went to 27 and 7, 24 and 15. And then even with the Saints, he went to 26 and 11, then 28 and 18. And none of that stuff is all world great. So you're talking six seasons before he broke out the following year. He had like 34 touchdowns. Now, some of that was the rule changes that helped all quarterbacks lift up. He was in a much tougher league than to is now on the quarterbacks and on the passing. But still, look at what you saw there. You would say this guy is a disaster, but when it finally came together, the framework finally came together, and when he was able to mature and develop and really put together some of the best mechanics I've ever seen in that he was highly consistent. And this is a very undervalued, people talk about his arm, arm, arm. The arm is actually the very last thing that, Helps a quarterback throw the ball deep. It's everything else. It's your toes, your calves, your thighs, your hips, your back, your shoulders, your triceps. And then like the last part of that arm. You know, obviously weight and size helps too. But mechanics, throwing motion, platform integrity, these are the keys to throwing the football at the maximum velocity. And if Tua could put this together, along with his other skill sets, the quick release, the ability to get mobile, this kid has what it takes to be successful. What will that success be? I don't know. But this year, you're going to get the best Tua you've seen. And then we can start evaluating the kid from this point on. Now, past Tua, we're going to get into the current injury list. Here's the injury list, and there's some hope, and then there's some concerns. Now, Savin Ahmed, limited practice Wednesday and Thursday. Not the greatest thing in the world, but he's third string down the line. You know, not the end of the world. Interestingly enough, Teron Armstead's been limited both Wednesday and Thursday. It's not injury related. It's vet rest and coming off his surgery. Still, he's had very little exposure, very little time to play with the guys next to him. I'm interested to see how much rust there will be. I think the guy's going to be awesome. I think he's going to play really, really well. But still, still, you can't expect him to be the full Tehran at this stage. I think Tehran's going to be fine. My Interest is going to see how Eichenberg plays next to him. Has he played with him enough to get chemistry to understand how much he has to help or actually how little? This is going to be the interesting part for me. We'll see Friday. He'll probably get a full practice, hoping. I wouldn't be really too concerned with it, but I think it is a little bit of an interesting note. Uh, Chase Edmonds, he had a groin issue, limited practice, was a little concerned, but now it's full practice. Don't like the groin thing. Groin injuries. Had one of those too. Not fun. But it could be something really small. Glad to see he had a full practice, which means it's not serious. Miles Gaskin, neck, he's up to the full practice. I think that does play a part. I, I think he's a guy that you do want to see in there and be ready to go on Sunday if he's activated. I think they'll take three running backs into the game. Uh, Alec Ingold, hamstring, second limited practice. I don't like that. You know, he's only going to come in for a couple plays, so I'm sure he'll be all right. And he's not doing, you know, 80-yard, uh, you know, sprints down the field to do a fly or anything. So it's not the end of the world. Melvin Ingram, another vet with two limited practices. I'm fine with that, too. 
But the concerning one here, I thought, was Nick Needham. Now, we know the wrist, but now they're saying here he's got a quad injury and has been limited for two games. I know people are really high on the secondary, even without Byron Jones, to shut down the Patriots. But a bad wrist and a balky quad playing out of position is a little concerning. I I don't think that's madness or negativity. This is going to put a little more highlight on this position. Now, hopefully he's practicing full on Friday. If he is, I'd be a little bit less concerned, still a little bit, because quads and hamstrings, they can act up and really then start plaguing you for the whole season. And we need him certainly all year, but even more so for the first four games. Now, Eric Rowe finally found out what his issue is. It's pectoral, limited practice both days. He'll be able to play. Uh, But you just worry that if he's got to get in there in the heat of a tackle, that it it could tear or could do extra damage to it. But he'll be cut. His his key thing for us is coverage. So I don't really find that a big deal. Van Ginkle, limited practice both days. Looks like he's going to probably make it. Probably coming for only a handful of snaps. But I think that's really important for us. But this is the big one and the big, big positive. And that's Jalen Waddell. He went from limited practice to full practice, and he has that quad injury. Now, quads, like I said, he missed a lot of time. And now he had limited, but came back to a full practice. And it should still be concerning. But the fact he's getting a full practice today and likely a full practice tomorrow, he's going to be available on Sunday, and this is a big deal. It's a, it's a big, big deal. I do have concern that this thing could pop up and plague him through the season if it's not taken care of, but I'm trusting in the trainers. I'm trusting in the situation and keeping my fingers crossed because Waddle and Hill is the key to making this machine run to its highest level. we got to see this guy stay healthy and play all season. So we'll see how that goes, but this is great news. But now here's a little bit of an odd one. We're back. It's up and down, up and down. Raekwon Davis, they're not saying why, but he had a limited practice on Thursday. Now his knee took a beating. If you watch, I think it was a second or third preseason game. He got hit in the side. He was grabbing the side of his knee. I think it was the same knee that got damaged last year. But it's not listed as a knee. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe just some kind of rest. There's no note on Raekwon Davis. But given the fact we're going against a run attack that's very, very serious, he is a key piece. This is one I'm going to keep note on. Really going to look forward to it. Keep my fingers. I want to see full practice tomorrow. And with full practice with him and Nick Needham, and I'll feel really good. The weather thing, we'll have to wait to see how that plays out. I do believe that is a big deal. I hear some people saying that if it's wet, it suits us. That's totally not real, guys. I don't know where anybody who's ever played would say that. I mean, you might believe that, but there's no way that if movement, cutting movement is restricted on a slick ground that you're helping your speedsters. For def- I heard somebody even say this. It was like, if it's rainy and windy, it's going to be good for us because it's going to make it hard. No. They play lots of zones, and they'll sit in those zones, and they'll force us to make cuts, and the players will have to slow down their breaks, and it's going to slow down the process of the play, and you're going to have wind, and you're going to have rain, which makes it more difficult to catch. If it's rainy and it's windy, it does not suit us. Anybody who's saying that is really needs to consider that. I'm not saying you're a bad guy or an idiot, but if you've ever played on a wet ground, that does not help you if you're fast. You're a big guy. Slow guy, and you're praying for rain, and you're praying for wet. You're a passing team, you're praying for sun. You're a running team, playing a passing team, you're playing for wind and rain. We need the wind to blow this thing out, have a clear, hot day, and that will give us the best chance to win. I don't think we're going to lose if it's rainy or windy, but it does move the ball of home field advantage from our court 
into a neutral zone and maybe tilting it towards the Patriots. We'll see. Injuries, we'll see. Still a lot to play out. Great news is I really feel good about Tua. I do. Again, this does not mean he's going to be Hall of Famer this year, but I feel like he's taking that trend. Breeze, seven years before he launched. Tua's got two and had a, maybe, uh, yes, he definitely had a worse framework. So I'm really excited. Want Waddle to be there. Want Hill to be there. I want a clear day. So Tua can throw the football without restrictions and kind of get the talk moving off him and on to something else. Anyway, guys, I'm really getting excited. Can't wait to watch this game tonight, but it's nothing like opening day for Miami Dolphins football. Can't wait. Hopefully we get what we are all hoping for is one heck of a 2022 season, starting off with beating the Patsies. Anyway, as Curtis saying, thanks for staying to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Subscriptions, uh, likes, I love that. Comments to me, when I look, at a podcast, the comments, if I see lots of comments, I feel like I've succeeded because that's really what I like most. So I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Curtis saying, catch you next time. Get ready for this big game on Sunday. Go Fins. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.